All right, all right, guys. Dreadnought's back today with a new review, and we're going to be taking a look at the Diamond Select Ghostbusters Winston Zedmore action figure. Looking very cool here in the packaging. I like the Ghostbusters theme they went with. Lots of nice accessories, it looks like, and I can't wait to get it open. Here's a look at the back of the packaging, and you can see here it has a nice picture of the figure, and then there's a little bio and the other two figures from the wave. I was able to find this at Toys R Us, and I was unable to catch Lewis Tully or Ray Stantz. Uh, this was the only figure they had, so that was kind of a bummer. But here's a look at that bio. If you want to pause it and read it now, you can do so. So let's crack this bad boy open and get a look at it. So just inside the packaging, I wanted to show you a couple things real quick. It does come with a Ghostbusters uh, licensed product uh, sheet uh, from Diamond Select, which is kind of neat. And then also I wanted to show you this guy has a ton of twisty ties. Uh, so he is kind of a job to get out of the packaging. So we'll get these off and get a closer look. And seven twisty ties later, and here's our Winston Zedmore out of the packaging, just looking absolutely stunning. Diamond Select just really impressed me with the amount of detail just right off the bat getting this guy out of the package. And I can't say enough about how impressed I am. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, is definitely use heat. When getting this guy out before posing him, he's very, very stiff and feels very brittle. Uh, I ran the hair dryer over him for about three or four minutes, and he was good to go. Everything loosened up just fine, and I had no issues. So let's take a closer look. And taking a look at accessories first, I'd like to say, you know, it's just nice how many accessories come with the figure. Uh, but sadly, I've had several issues with the accessories, and we'll talk about those now. Uh, but it comes with several sets of hands. Uh, it comes with six total ungloved hands. As you can see, this is the open hand here. Uh, and they're sculpted pretty well. See some fingernails sculpted in there, nice brown paint. But it has this really thick lip on the peg, which makes these extremely hard to get on and off of the figure. You usually have to use heat just to change them out which I found to be a real bummer. Also, there is just a ton of uh, paint that flecks off as well, not only on the joint, but on the hand itself, you can see there, uh, which kind of sucks as well. They're kind of reminiscent of the DC Collectibles Batman animated series and how bad they were. Uh, also comes with two semi-closed hands, as you can see here, you know, pretty well sculpted. You can see they got too much paint on this one, so it actually covered up the fingernail sculpting. Uh, and then it comes with a completely closed hand, which I honestly don't know what fits in this. It's so closed up uh, that you can't really, it looks like it's made for something in particular, but I haven't found what that is yet. Uh, and then it comes with the um, hand for the walkie-talkie, and it fits in there very nicely. See some paint rubbing off on the walkie-talkie, but yeah, it looks good in that hand and I think the walkie-talkie came out fine you know not a ton of detail but the buttons are sculpted in and the antenna and it looks all right you know very reminiscent of what we've seen in the movie and then it fits in his holster here uh, you know on the side which is really cool fits in there fine no problems there uh, and then also it comes with uh, gloved hands and these are pretty nice and how they made them they have part of a sleeve that slides off and then the hand slides up in there and it came with uh, two set of semi-closed you know and uh, then it also came with two open hands as you can see here and I've tried to demonstrate putting these on in a previous cut of the video and just really couldn't get these hands on so I'm gonna give it one more try uh, just for sake of saying I did uh, but it is nice how this slides up on here to give it the look of the gloves and then you just peg it in. Uh, but they're just extremely, extremely tough. Uh, and that's still not in. Um, so, yeah, it, it's still not in there. And you can see that paint flecking off there. Maybe if we move some of this paint off and get it in there, we'll give it one more shot. And I hate using video time to, to try and do this, but I just have been unable to do this without actually getting a hairdryer out and uh, taking a few minutes. So that's, you know, yeah, still just not going on. You can get them on, I will say that, uh, you know, but I'll have to do it off camera because it just takes time. You have to heat it up and then try to force them in. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, that sucks. So, you know, just bad paint fleckage and then they don't fit on real well. They do have different hinges based on the hand. Uh, the semi-closed hand have the roll of the dice hinges, which is neat. And I like that addition. Uh, and then last, it comes with the trap. And you can see here, this is actually a pretty cool piece. 
Uh, it's got the uh, foot pedal down here. You know, some nice detail on that, like that texture in there, the white paint app and the yellow and the blue. And then you have the wire that runs down here to the trap itself and looks pretty nice. Got some red paint apps and I love that silver they used on it. And green and silver over here. Then some yellow and red and silver, uh, you know, all around here. Looking very cool. And then it has the hazard logo on top. It's a little bit unevenly spaced, but looks good. I do wish like the Mattel version that this opened up. It does not. It's just a solid piece, and there's it's actually hollow down in the bottom there. So, but you know it's well sculpted and it's well painted. Looks pretty good. And I said that was last, but there's actually uh, this piece here, uh, <laughs> and I really don't even want to talk about this. But this is the uh, the proton stream or whatever, and I've got several problems with it other than the fact that it's broken here, as you can see. Uh, first, when I got it out of the package, it had a peg down here. And looking at the wand, there's nowhere to peg it in that I could find. And there's no real instructions uh, with the figure. You know, I was going to try and slide it down in here into this gap down here. And uh, it broke off just almost instantly when touching it. So then I thought, well, you know, maybe I could try and wrap some of this blue around or something to hold it on the end or wedge it in here. And I just barely bent this and it just snapped in half just really easily. So it's made out of a very breakable plastic and it's very uh, brittle. Uh, I do like the thought behind it. I like the little blue wrapped around this and it's just a rubbery plastic. Uh, but, you know, it's just not a, a usable piece. I wish it was more flexible and poseable. And honestly, I, I think I would have liked something more transparent than this just bright orange uh, that they used as well. So, you know, this piece I really didn't care about. So it's a throwaway for me uh, on the figure anyway. Uh, and then last but not least, again, it does come with a stand. And uh, that's pretty cool. And he stands pretty well on it. It's got pegs on both bottoms of his feet. And, uh, you know, he is pretty weighted uh, with the pack on, but, you know, he stands pretty well with that stand and looks okay. It's just plastic, you know, not much to it. Uh, pretty flimsy. So let's take a closer look at the actual figure. And looking closer at the figure here, I think it came out very nice overall. I'm really impressed with the paint apps and the sculpting on here. Uh, just looking at the head sculpt, it definitely resembles Ernie Hudson. He's even got that classic smirk you can see to the side of his lips there, which is really cool. The eyes came out nice and clean. Uh, there's a little bit too much brown on this side, uh, but really it looks good overall. And there's a little black that got on his cheek. And uh, down here on the bottom of his lip, I guess, from the mustache they painted on. Uh, I think I can get an X-Acto knife and get that off, but it came out pretty good. The uh, hair came out really nice. Got that texture on top and looks nice. There's no holes or patchiness to the hair, which you see sometimes often with this kind of application. Uh, and it just came out really nice and clean. Looks, looks really good. Uh, looking down through the uniform, and we'll talk about the pack separately. But I love the, uh, the actual uniform itself. The Zedmore came out nice and clean. Looks perfectly lettered. Red with the black around it. Just looks really good. You can see these silver accents through here for zippers, uh, which is really nice. The black t-shirt. And then all the wrinkles sculpted in and everything. And then that, that brushing over or dry brushing to give it that dirty look. Uh, looks really, really nice. The Ghostbusters logo over here on the side is even... Uh, toned down a bit. It's nice and clean with the app, but um, you know, it's kind of toned down to make it look dirty as well, which I thought was a nice touch. And looking through the arms, you can see it has these gray uh, elbow pads, and these are removable or movable. Uh, but you can see underneath the gray strap actually has some wear, uh, you know, sculpted in and, and uh, that brushing over it as well. Nice wrinkles in the bottom of the arms where it kind of tucks in down here. Uh, to what should be the gloves and I did go ahead and put these gloves on so you can get a look at those you know and they came out pretty well and what I had to do is I just heated them up in, in between shots it takes about two or three minutes to heat them up and get them get them on uh, the one thing I will say though is even with heat when you're removing the old ones uh, there's still a problem you can see that stress point on this one that I just took off uh, to get the hands on the gloved hands on it really stressed that out uh, and almost broke it. So, you know, that's the bad thing. These hands are not going to be, you know, the ones you can just change, you know, anytime you like. Um, 
you know, you're going to have to do it with some heat and with some caution and probably not do it that often, actually. Uh, but getting back to the actual figure, all the way through here looks good. The belt looks really nice. A lot of nice detail sculpted in with the buckles, you know, and the gadgets here on the side and the hoses over here. And we'll lift his arm up there. You can see the nice green paint apps and the red. And I like the color choice of gray they used and then the silver paint apps on all the little buckles. And then that was where his walkie-talkie went and some more stuff over here looking really nice. You know, definitely really, really cool. You know, I'm not going to say it's 100% screen accurate, but man, it looks close enough to me. Uh, and then looking down through the pants, he's got this yellow hose here. I'd be cautious with that. It does feel kind of like it would break. Nice silver paint app there. And that same brushing down through here to give it that dirty or worn look. And just really nice wrinkles sculpted all the way in. And then down here on the boots, nice touches down here too. If you can see, there's some silver paint apps as well on the insides here uh, to look like zippers, which I thought was just a nice little touch on the boots. And they're, they're pretty much flat black, some peg holes down there. But it almost looks like they did some gray dry brushing or something over the laces to kind of set them apart. You can't really tell it. It's just almost almost slightly there. <laughs> I know that doesn't make sense, but uh, it's there and then it's not there. But you know, just a just a hint of it. And then looking around at the back of the figure, uh, for some reason his butt comes out really clean. <laughs> I wish they would have done a little better job with the same brushing. You know, it's just his butt sticks out. Everything's clean. I mean, everything's dirty until you look at his butt and it looks like he's been sitting somewhere uh, nice and clean. But same wrinkles back here and that same dirty dry brushing all over through the back, even of the figure over here underneath the pack. Uh, same thing going on over here. And then looking at the pack itself, um, you know, it has these nice green straps here. You know, I would have preferred if they looked a little more aged, maybe a little darker green. But I think they came out pretty nice, and there's some black paint apps on them that look really nice. And this does not appear to be removable. I'm sure you can move his arms around. This does seem to be very flexible, and you probably can flex them off and work it off the figure that way. Uh, I didn't want to try it just because of the issues I've had with, you know, with figures doing that kind of stuff and things breaking. I didn't want to risk breaking the actual pack. But I found no other way to actually remove it, uh, you know, from the figure. This doesn't have any pegs down here uh, that looks like it would pull apart uh, to work it off. So uh, it is nicely sculpted, though. It actually even looks like the bracket they used or the mouth they used from the military pack uh, when they made the movie. Uh, and then under here, you can see this is kind of hollow in here. Uh, but it looks like it's glued on, so you can't really, it looks like it's trying to pull off, but it looks like it's glued right here in the middle, and it won't. Um, but then looking at the back of the pack, you know, not completely screen accurate probably, but man, it really resembles it from the movie to me. The only thing that stands out is not resembling is, I don't remember the colors being this bright on these wires here. <clears throat> and then maybe they were, you might can correct me in the comments below, but... Uh, it just seems a little bright for what I remember from the movie, but everything else looks pretty, you know, pretty spot on. I know it's not going to be 100%, but, you know, it does resemble the Proton Pack enough. It has the thing down here, the red and silver paint apps all through here, the hoses, uh, you know, nice blue paint apps, and then, you know, the wires and everything. You know, it, it does have these are not paint applications. I wish they were, but they're actually stickers that were on the figure. I didn't have to place them on there. Uh, they were on there. Uh, and their placement's really fine. Hopefully they won't come off. Uh, but, you know, that gives it a more authentic look as well. So, you know, I think they did okay overall with the Proton Pack. And then it has the wire down here. And I would be cautious with this one as well. It does seem kind of, seems like it's wire, like regular wire covered maybe in, in plastic. So I could see if you bend it at a sharp corner or something at breaking. Uh, but then just looking at the wand itself, uh, you know, looks pretty good overall. He's going to take a tumble there. Uh, you know, nice silver paint apps on there. Actually has a sticker on it as well. Uh, you know, just black for the most part. It has that red up here at the top. You know, not a lot going on, but it is sculpted very well and looks pretty good. So, you know, I like that. So overall, I have to say, you know, he looks pretty decently sculpted and I like the paint apps on him overall. Uh, you know, just 
few minor problems and blemishes and then the thing with the hands really and taking a look at articulation i heated this guy up so we could get a little more range of movement from his joints uh the head moves up just a little bit moves down a great amount can rotate around and he has some nice pivot in there on the head as well uh, the arm moves out that far will rotate all the way around has a single joint elbow and you can move these shoulder pads to get that to move correctly uh, it does rotate there at the elbow hand swivel around has the hinge it moves up down and then the other hand the more closed hand has the roll of the dice hinge uh, speaking of hands i did try to change out the hands once again during the break when heating them up and i had i guess it was bound to happen but i had a hand break off clean uh, down in the peg hole there. Uh, it's, this is actually not the one that was stressed. This is another one uh, And I actually took some dental tools to work out most of the plastic but There's still a piece down in there and I'll have to work that out before uh, Getting another hand in there. So that kind of sucks and you know, it's really a disappointment on the figure uh, But back to articulation. He has this diaphragm upper diaphragm joint here, which gives you some good pivot especially to that side uh, It actually rotates up here as well and it crunches forward a very nice amount like so and it actually moves back a decent amount as well you can see there also has waist rotation we'll move this belt down so you can see it and the whole thing does rotate which is nice uh, and then down here on the legs it's got these funky joints uh, that we've seen with diamond select before and I'm trying not to break them but uh, moves out a little more on this side than this one for some reason and it's a little tight on this side uh, but moves out a good a bit uh, Doesn't really kick forward that much and get him about that far forward uh, And not really back at all uh, Does have the upper leg rotation like so uh, Has double jointed knees and get those to bend up like that a little squeaky uh, No rotation down here at the boot uh, it does have the hinge on the foot moves up like that down like that and it actually does have a rocker on there which is really nice and here's our diamond select winston zedmore compared to his mattel counterparts and these guys have a little dust on them from being on the shelf for a while and you see they don't scale well together our diamond select is measuring in right under seven inches tall and you can see these guys still hold up pretty well but you can definitely see the increased amount of detail on the diamond select and here's our Winston compared to our Diamond Select Hawkeye. And I love the way these guys scale together. I can already see that Avengers Ghostbusters team up going on in my display. And for weirdness and a recent point of reference, here he is next to the Hasbro Black Series Kylo Ren. And wrapping up here quickly, overall, I got to say, I have real mixed feelings on this review. Uh, the review was really a pain in the ass to deal with uh, because of the problems with the accessories, the hands, uh, you know, of course, being a major issue at every point. Uh, just every time we tried to swap those out, they just became an issue and with the breakage and then of course the uh, proton stream breaking as well You know normally with that many issues. I'd probably rate the figure a pass overall uh, But really I have to admire what diamond select uh, Did with the amount of sculpting and the amount of detail in the in the figure and paint I think they just really hit that part out of the park uh, the only real issue I have when the figure with hands and stuff aside is the fact that the proton pack wasn't removable And I kind of wish they used paint instead of stickers on part of it uh, You know, but other than that I can really see what they were going for with this line and I definitely appreciate it as a Ghostbusters fan The articulation is really nice, especially for a diamond select figure uh, The only thing you need to know is you are going to probably have to heat it up several times during posing uh, and if it sits for any kind of length of time, I can see the figure becoming stiff and having to use heat once again when reposing. Uh, but, you know, with all that said, overall, I'm still going to rate the figure a buy, even with the issues with the accessories. Uh, based on the price point that I actually got this figure at, these figures were selling in Toys R Us for like $12.98 when they came out. And uh, I've seen them since uh, priced on the peg for that. I've been unable to get them because they've been sold out, but uh, I have seen them priced at that. And if you can get the figure at that price point, I just think that's an outstanding deal uh, for what you get with this figure, even if there's some problems with it. Uh, you know, five point of articulation figures in some lines will run you almost $12. So, you know, I think you get a lot more for your buck uh, with this Diamond Select figure. Uh, you know, with that said, though, I have seen in my search for Ray, I've seen uh, prices go on Amazon, on third party, uh, in eBay, you know, upwards of $50. I can't really rate the figure a buy at that price point, not with the issues I had with it. 
Uh, I think if you can get the Vigor at a fair price, get them cheap. And by the way, the twelve ninety eight was not a sale price. I've actually seen that price posted, uh, you know, in Toys R Us and several stores. So that's an actual price they're selling them for in store if you can get your hands on one. Uh, but you know, twelve to twenty bucks is probably the price range I would be in on this figure, and not much more. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. If so, please give me a big thumbs up. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. Plenty of more content coming down the road for you guys. As always, Twitter, Facebook, Toy Art links in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.